Uh, thank you very much for your, your testimony. And we'll now have uh, five minute rounds of, of questions. And we might be able to get through a, a couple rounds if we're, we're fortunate. I encourage you to keep your responses as succinct as you can so that uh, we can get through as many points as, as possible. Uh, uh, Mr. Myers, uh, I'm going to start uh, with, with you. Uh, you made reference to the endocrine disrupting chemicals in plastics. Are plastic producers required by law to inform the public of all the chemicals that are in the different plastics they produce? Not only are they not required by law, but it would be physically impossible because many of the compounds in plastics are what are called non-intentionally added substances, which get there basically by accident. They get there because they're impurities. Okay, and but in terms of the chemicals that are added deliberately for uh, flexibility, for hardness, for colors, uh, are those required to be disclosed to the public? To my, to my knowledge, they are not, and it would be a good move if they were required. Mr. Seaholm, do you support full transparency for the chemicals that are added to the plastics that go into the public realm? Yeah, we've, we have full faith in the FDA's uh, uh, approval and decision-making process, and that's uh, when it comes to food contact in particular, we never cut corners when it comes to safety. So you, you support full disclosure of all the chemicals that go into the plastics that go into the public realm? Well, I guess it depends on which kind of plastics you're referring to. But if we're talking about food contact, which is really what, where safety comes first and foremost, uh, I think the FDA approval process is, is certainly sufficient. And we participate and fully support it. Okay. I, I appreciate your, your, your point about those things that come in contact with food. Uh, but certainly, we, one of the challenges we have is uh, all the other plastics uh, degrade and, and have uh, as they become microplastics, as they release uh, chemicals over, over time. Uh, I want to uh, go to the impact that you noted, uh, Mr. Myers, uh, over the, the question of, of those specific chemicals that affect human reproduction. During my lifetime, we've seen a big increase in breast cancers, a big increase in prostate cancers, uh, and um, you noted a 50% decline uh, in uh, male sperm production. Well, most men would kind of, oh, whoa, what's that? Now, are all three of those related uh, to the presence of endocrine disruptors in the products that are released into the public realm? Those all three are predictable consequences of being exposed to certain endocrine disruptors, but they aren't all three due to the same endocrine disruptor. So it's a very complicated system. There, there are hundreds if not thousands of EDCs, and they all have their unique characteristics of harm. A few years ago, uh, there was a whole uh, uh, movement across the country saying, well, one in particular uh, and I, not being a chemist, maybe I'll mispronounce it, but uh, bisphenol A? Bisphenol A. Bisphenol A, or BPA as it came to be called in the yeah. public realm. I was like, well, we've got to get this out of the lining of our tuna cans. And oh my goodness, how about out of our water bottles too? Has that actually changed by law, or is it just that some makers of water bottles now advertise that uh, they're BPA free? Um, the one um, BPA product that has been eliminated by the FDA in the market is baby bottles. But that was done at the behest of ma the manufacturers of baby bottles because they were getting such bad press from all the, the big stories about BPA harm. Um, most products in, in, that include BPA have not been removed from the market. So what about the water bottles that we, we buy in the, in the store? Those are largely motivated by uh, marketers by companies who have an alternative to BPA and want to advertise that they are BPA free. The problem is that the most common is BPS, which is a minor variant on BPA and subsequent research since that substitution became known has shown it is just as bad if not worse than BPA. So do, uh, you, you also mentioned your written testimony, phthalates and perfluorinated compounds. And perfluorinated, is that the same as PFOS? Uh, per, uh, yes, it is. So we have PFOS in plastics, we have phthalates. 
that's going to exist in the universe for thousands of years to come and find out how much uh, PFOS is in it or, or phthalates are in it, because that disclosure is not required, isn't that right? That disclosure is not required. And disclose in food packaging content so that the common practice of fluorinating uh, high, dens high density uh, propyl polypropylene um, with fluorination is not widely known, but is very common. I, I have one. Members of the, that are here to ask questions.